up, Shredders? My name is Logan, aka Spider Hands, and welcome to the SP Patrons video, where today I'm going to be making a monthly custom music review for Ting uh, of Chris Christodolo Con Lentitu Poderosa. If we switch over to here, where I have most likely completely unintentionally butchered the pronunciation of these words, um, we have Risk of Rain 2 2020. Um, I have heard really positive things about um, Risk of Rain. I would like to play the game, personally. I would also like for myself to know how to arrange a mic properly when I record reviews, despite having done almost probably a thousand of them. We are going to listen through this track from start to finish, and we're going to hear what we think. Let's go. So as a strong start when you begin with these piano lines, I... Nice little bit of tension there and an interesting move with the bass here. Nice uh, airiness and reverb to the sound of the piano. Oh, great move having these really wispy sounding synth bits in the middle. It's interesting to have them in the center, but I suppose we have the, the piano panned widely enough that having those parts also wide would be a little bit too much. We're trying to pique the listener's attention rather than um, give them everything at once. That organ there is a wonderful, it's a wonderful decision to put that organ in there. It's got a nice reverb to it, and it just fills in a little bit of space there that we would have had, we, we, we just had lingering, and it's a nice develop, bit of development. And to have the guitar single pad tracked in the middle like that is a really, really slick decision. I wouldn't have done it myself, but it's exactly why we've got this dude making the music for big video games, right? Oh, I get it now. This, by the way, is how you introduce your second act of a piece. We just had everything come in really wide with those drums. And then guitar line, drums, bass, just so clever. The production is phenomenal. Everything sounds so nice and clear in the mix. Is that a synth lead as well in there? It definitely is. Tight compression in the master chain, but it's working. The side chaining is done very well. I see you. I see you, Chris. If you were to say to me that this is not one of the prettiest arrangements you've heard that contains these synths, leads, bass and drums within this genre and within video game soundtracks, then you'd be lying. 
You'd be lying. This is beautiful. That Bordamento on that synth lead is just so stunning, man. Is he using a Kita? That talent and finesse is absolutely criminal. This makes me want to play the game. Um, so, Ting, if you're watching this, thank you. I love that, you know, through these reviews I do, just in general, I get to listen to so much cool music that I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to listen to otherwise. What a, what a, what an astoundingly incredible song that was. Like, the, the, the original soundtrack is just, I'm, because we're going to talk about why that is. I'm so thankful that I haven't forgotten to switch like the the camera view I have because occasionally and recently what I have done is I've just forgotten to switch to like this from my conclusion where I'm big and then I've completely wasted a really good and first impression reaction review that I have to re-record again. But not today, because this is my conclusion of the CC Patrons video uh, for Chris Christodolo con Lanch Shu Poderosa from Risk of Rain 2 from 2020. I'll level with you. I mean, obviously this is an instrumental. We didn't have vocals in here. We didn't need it. We did not need to have a voice in here. We did not need to have our hands held throughout this experience there was no there was no room for vocals because the mastery that's been put on shown by chris is that it leaves you it sounds full it sounds like it's enough occasionally and this is something that i'm still learning to do myself which is why i'm so impressed by this is that you'll create you have people that deliberately create instrumentals but th but then they'll they'll think of it like a traditional kind of sort of pop or rock song and the problem is is that you just cannot do that without because that's built around a voice a story being told so in, an, in a soundtrack or a song like this you have to find a way to replace that voice with something more meaningful the the closest thing to a voice would probably be the lead the synth the lead guitars and the, the lead synths the lead melodies there but what was so incredible is that we went away from that substitution to something where we actually had multiple different guitar lines and multiple different voicings at the same time. The reason that's so impressive to me is that not only was the panning and the production absolutely sensational, but you also, he found places for that which I couldn't have imagined. And they all had this almost kind of counterpoint, counter melody part where they would kind of stray away from each other both literally in stereo feel, but also that come back together for these wonderful interval spacings. That the overall harmony twisted and turned in a way that felt both incredibly um, distant. You know, you could tell that this is a song about space and the emptiness and the loneliness of it. But also it's almost like everything comes together in the end like this picture and they, they come together to, to, to form this wonderful arrangement, this, um, this, te this, this incredible vibe and mood and environment where, it, you know, I, I honestly think this is one of the most gorgeous game soundtracks I've heard in my life. And I, again, I really want to play this game. The structure was your traditional instrumental where you typically have like an A then a B section then potentially have like a C for an outro where things would die down a little bit. That was what we had here. We had like a bell curve where the energy went like that. You know, we gradually introduced the instruments one by one. We didn't need to go as hard as we did in that midsection, but oh my goodness, we went really hard. And I, I want to like, I, 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 I doubt the guy would like watch this the guy who made it but if if he is watching dude you're an absolute legend and i hope that you continue to work with more projects like risk of rain i i don't i don't know where you'd, you'd start with trying to improve this it's just you know not only was the structure so incredible but you just had these 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 interesting individual concepts that layered well on top of each other and gradually led to that crescendo in the middle where everyone was dancing and it was spectacular you had an immense dynamic range here a clear understanding of how to build and and drop a track in the right best possible way in a way that makes sense to both from a musical perspective and to a listener and i think that this track manages to to cross that balance on the midpoint between being a great song 
but being great background material as well because I think that you could legitimately enjoy this just as much whether you are listening to it focused like I'm doing now or if you're playing the game with it in the background. I it, It's very difficult to get both. You know, finally, the, the production, recording, mixing, mastering. I'm going on to this because I think that it's difficult for me to really express the, the, the effective, how effective it was for us to have different individual really effective lines meld together and amalgamate into the beautiful tapestry that we had throughout i think this is a track where it's less important for me to talk about why it worked than it is for people to hear it on their own and come to their own conclusions especially considering instrumentals are abruptly subjective because you don't have a story carrying you along but the production was absolutely um incredible the the the, the occurring, this, the stereo panning, the effects change on the various instruments, how everything was balanced together and the actual mix itself and how everything was staged in the frequency spectrum, you know, the effects change on the various instruments and limiting compression and just the, the, the sweetness and brightness and the, the, the thing beyond that where it transcends simply being well produced and well written and almost becomes a bigger part than, this, than its components, it's ludicrous how underrated this is. This should be something that more people need to, to hear. I, I really hope this gets more exposure. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for your wonderful efforts. But effectively, this is my review of this SP Patreon video for Chris, Chris Stowe Delos, Con Lentitude Poderosa from Risk of Rain 2. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show Chris some love via his various social medias and YouTube page. Stay cool and stay safe, and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time. As either hell more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world, and I'll catch you in the next review. Spider hands out.